How's it going, guys? We made it back from New Orleans, and we had a fantastic mission trip last week. The students did an amazing job, and they were stretched far beyond their comfort zones. All of us were, honestly. I was so happy to see God use the students and then grow them at the same time. You can ask any of the students that went with us, and any of the adults for that matter, what was tested the most this past week. And I think we'd all agree that it was our patience. It was a long week that required a lot of flexibility from everybody that was involved. One of our readings in the morning came from 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 2. And so I want to share that with you guys this morning, and then just share a little bit about what we learned from that passage this past week. Here it goes. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had, and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you'll be anxious to do the will of God. You know, we actually read that passage as our morning devotion on the bus when we were going over Lake Pontchartrain on the very last day of the camp with the kids. Um, And at this point, man, suffering was something we were all pretty familiar with in some fashion, right? The kids were exhausted. Our kids were. It was hot outside. We were working really full days with very little break. Um, This verse was put on the last day by design. I had no doubt about it. It's a reminder that suffering is the attitude that we should embrace as Christ followers. When we are comfortable, we tend to kind of work in our own limited power. But when we are suffering, we tend to work in God's unlimited power. When we suffer, it also brings us more in line with the model of Jesus, right? Jesus, he didn't live a comfortable life, and he put the needs of other people over his own needs, even to the point where he willingly took on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. You know, the second part of the verse that we just read, it encourages us to live our lives striving for the will of God. Too many people spend their entire life striving for their own desires or what the world tells them is important. But for the believer, guys, the will of God should be the focus of all of our efforts. That means there may be activities or people or language that we use or movies or TV shows that we watch or just this long list of other things that we might have to get rid of in order to live a more obedient life. So my challenge for you guys, as I gave to our students that last morning, what things in your life are keeping you from living an obedient life? And what is keeping you from sacrificing those things? Ask God to help you give up those things so that you can live a life that's more fully devoted and fully dependent on him. That is when we're going to see some real change happen around us in the world, and it's also when we're going to see some real change happen inside of us, guys. Have a great rest of the day. Ask some of our students about the trip and their experiences, and remember to embrace suffering when it comes into your life. God is at work in those moments all the time. See you guys soon.